for this video we are also going to go over again a mid game late game end game build for Comet and this time two special builds or use cases which is going to be gear raid one Comet and void rift Comet because there's a pretty neat trick I want to show y'all so do make sure to watch till the end was well, good y'all it's time for my favorite hero in the entire game easily Comet man I just L fucking love his design it's fire it's absolutely lit his ama animations are amazing and overall i mean look at him he's a fucking egyptian god so today we're going to talk about the true god of knowledge wealth and undeath at least that's what his story entails as you can see none shall have mastery over knowledge but he the true god at last of knowledge wealth and undeath then let's get straight into his kit. Why would I even refer as to him as the nuke, the nuker, the exploder, the enemy eliminator? That is because, as a fun fact, did you know Kamet's ultimate attacks have a reach of 8 tiles? If Kamet activates his ultimate, he reaches, let's say he activates his ultimate over here. The ultimate hits all eight tiles around it. So he has a nine tile reach on his ultimate explosion, which is just ridiculous. But all right, let's, let's start at the beginning. We're going to talk about the talent first. So yes. why not? Basically, after him hitting the enemy for the first time, he slams on another 400% extra high damage. So he does a normal attack and then does damage equal to four normal attacks on top of that. Which is which is just huge. And regarding his normal attack, he starts out on a basic 100% magic damage, but to two enemies. So already not just single, but already slightly AOE focused basic attack. Going up to 120%, so the usual. Then over here we have the Curse of Obliteration. That every seven attacks he applies a debuff called Curse. Curse uh, stops those units from being able to perform basic attacks. So helps with stalling, helps with tanking. And in general, just an interesting debuff doesn't you don't really feel its effect, but it's definitely there. And the next attack on an enemy target with curse can trigger his talent again, right? Again, another 400 percent damage. And obviously going down to 5 required attacks and a curse duration of 4 seconds. Pretty much shutting down the basic attacks for a long time. And as if that wasn't enough, he also has Infernal Plague. Upon him killing a target, which is obviously very likely with his fucking 400% extra high damage, his attack will bounce to two enemy targets and that again deals 120% magic damage at base level going up to 160%. And if we look at a uh, look at this trailer again, you can see it over here, right? He's going to attack this target with obliteration strike. And once he attacks here, you, you seen that you seen that wave? That is, it, he's so satisfying to play. Honestly, he just clears out waves, everything left and right dies, ping pong, it, it, just amazing. He's man, I love this guy. So yeah. His ultimate, each attack, so he basically goes into his ultimate stance and each attack of him now deals 320% damage with that 9 tile reach lasting for 15 seconds going way, all the way up to 400% damage per attack and into 20 seconds duration. So before we get into the awakenings let's talk about the usual water max and regarding what to max what you want to max is definitely the ultimate to, to level 4 ultimate to level 4 and the rest even though it is powerful it comes after after the ultimate so if once you have your ultimate to level 4 you can stay at that level for a long long while unless you want to go into the higher gear rate stages so probably gear rate 120 21 that's when you can think about upgrading the other tiles but this is his most important level bringing him to level 4 giving him 20 seconds at 400% damage so let's talk about inf uh, awakenings here so Kamet's awakening is pretty straightforward and enhances his talent allowing it to bounce to 3 in enemies instead of 2 so obviously enhancing his damage the attack like the attack bonus don't underestimate the attack bonus especially on mages 
because in this game, again, Daniel is showing me over here, it is very, very, very crucial for your mages to have a lot of attack, because content for mages is designed around overcoming huge, huge enemy defense, so for you to realistically be able to do damage against those, you need to pump that attack that up, you need to pump it up. And then we have the A3 over here, increases ultimate attack range. Now you might be asking yourself, ah, oh, how, how would we even know how that looks? I can show you how that looks. I know it's a crazy thing and I know it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily make sense, but once you upgrade him to A3, his ultimate range turns into this. Karmet gets Vortex heal range for his ultimate. His ultimate turns into this monstrosity. Funnily enough, I got his A3 recently. And if you do continue to normally play your stages, especially Void Rift, yada yada, with, with the normal A2 Karmet, you're going to see a couple of changes with the increased range that's most likely going to fuck up your rotations a bit and you kind of need to rethink your positioning based on that. But that's, that's just a side note. Let's go over A4 real quick. Rage region auto might as well, but who, who realistically gets A4? And then when dealing damage, Infernal Plague, so um, this one over here, when he kills someone and it bounces, inflicts curse. And why is that curse again important? Because it's going to allow him to use another obliteration strike on their target. But in general, if we talk about powerful awakenings, probably the second one just simply for the fact that uh, attack bonus is so huge. So an A2 Karmet is like perfectly fine. The ultimate uh, increases a bit over the top. The A4 is pretty much whatever, obviously huge uh, if you want the cycle rage, but definitely not even close to needed. And uh, the A5 is, is, is whatever. Yeah, so um, this already pretty much concludes us going over the skills. So let's get straight into how to build him. This brings us back to the familiar screen and we're again going to start on the left side going all the way up to the right side. So for the left side we have the usual choices, Calamity, Annihilating Might and Whirlwind Set. In this case all three are obviously strong choices and but Calamity, Calamity is slightly stronger just because of what kind of content you need mages for. So you do want to rather lean towards using a Calamity set uh, instead of the other two. But honestly, all three are super, super fine, super fine. And why do I again talk about making a set on the left side if you are only in the mid game section? That's because the main stats are fixed and you only need two pieces to form a set. Stat wise, what you want to look out for is going to be a simple attack bonus crit rate, attack bonus crit rate. And if you can get it, obviously flat attack as a sub is pretty nice. But it, it, you really, really, really want that attack bonus on your pieces, even though it already has it as a set effect. Which already brings us to the right side. So for the right side, especially early on, and even if you don't have a lot of gear, there's, there's, there's going to be two options. Option number one, you can reach 90% crit without a crit rate percent main stat. If you don't, just use a crit rate percent main stat to get 60% extra crit. But, very, very important, and as usual for any, any character, if you use crit rate percent at the top, it needs to be followed by double attack percent. So crit rate at the top stat and then double attack percent for the main stats of the other two pieces. And this, this time we're going to go with a simple, a simple triple attack percent split. Obviously, if you, if you have a calamity set with uh, good attack bonus stats and some flat attack, you could also go down with one piece of crit damage, but honestly, you don't really need to worry about it. A comet like this is totally fine. And yes, I know that green number looks huge, but keep in mind, my uh, comet is already A2, so he does get that 5% extra base. Artifact wise, I already talked about it. And you've, if you've seen any other guides, it's again ancestral teachings. Ancestral teachings bringing that 16% attack bonus is. Super nice, like straight off the bat, no conditions, nothing really. 16% attack bonus just allows him to overcome more enemy defense, damage formula, blah blah blah. And yeah, there's obviously going to be another contender, which is going to be Eye of the White Tower. Recently, they've buffed Eye of the White Tower, given it 
uh, given it a same ancestral teachings ish art uh, effect given it a straight up attack buff and also before it was like a 50 50 either get attack buff or attack speed buff now they added on an attack buff if there is no adjacent enemies so if you're just placing down Kamet and there's no one near him you also get an attack speed buff which is obviously viable but just because of the way you acquire ancestral teachings and the way you uh, inquire Eye of the White Tower because of the different rarities and also the cost in uh, enhancing those. Incestry teaching still is supreme, but if you have a lot of Eye of the White Towers lying around, you might as well want to uh, up it. But pretty much, that is that is really the most simplistic choices for the mage category. There isn't anything that really compares or competes on the same level. So those are the only two to consider really when going into the mid game just a little cut into ranked and properly i guess obviously there's still the options of a nightmare samsara uh soul eating crystal and spellcasters echo but trading off attack for just getting slightly more rage really really isn't working out especially with how Kamel's kit works and how important attack is so yeah those are going to be not quite in the trash tier but definitely at the lower end of potential choices this already puts us at late game gearing. So for late game gearing, again, a left to right choices, Calamity, Whirlwind, Annihilating, might a wallet set if you already have one. And here we are going to have the same stats. We're going to look for attack bonus, a crit rate, if you can find attack flat, attack speed, or crit damage, that's obviously perfectly fine and just adds onto the build. But just having a crit rate and attack bonus at this stage of the game is still alright. And this already finishes off the left side. Now onto the right side. Now onto the interesting part. Here, as you can see, we have a curse set. Curse set is by far out of all the blue sets. So referring to sets that you can get at stage 18s and below. Curse set is by far the best for mages. Because it gives an instant power boost going up to... 30% instantly as long as five enemies are in range and with them being mo with mages mostly being used against groups of enemies so referring to AOE mages specifically because single target mages are kind of sad but AOE mages man they're, they're useful super useful and yeah they, they mostly have a lot of enemies and they can instantly pull off 30% damage and that also permanently right so curse set is easily the best set if you have a good curse set lying around slap that bad boy on your comet and mm, you're going to be fine. Other notable options are going to be uh, the night terror set and the stick set. Then we have the fatality set followed by the fracture set and then uh, closing off with the wisdom set. Why don't I really like the wisdom set? The biggest problem with the wisdom set is if you did read the set effect already. It is only going to give a damage bonus after ultimate for a total of 10 seconds. And if you remember, you, we have a 15 second up to 20 second duration on Kamet. Pretty much wasting the potential. Because you do want to make sure that Kamet, especially in his ultimate, makes most out of it. And is able to really capitalize on his big damage numbers with his obliteration strike, etc. Making Night Terror, for example, a way better choice compared to Wisdom. Because Wisdom is only effective after ultimate, etc. Why, why is Fatality so good? Because obviously ignoring enemy defense based on the damage formula is going to be a good thing. Because if you ignore enemy defense, you can go lower in attack, higher in crit damage. And yeah, fra Fracture, uh, after all, just adds in more crit damage, which is good. So getting into the split, there's there's an important condition. So once you pretty much, what would I consider obviously late game, it's going it's going to be it's going to be the 19 stages, right? And the most important stage for a comet is going to be 119, and the magic number is called 14,000. You want 14,000 attack total on your comet before you bring him into gear rate 119 and what do I mean with 14,000 that's the white number plus the green number so we are above it at like 15,600 so if you can manage to bring him to around 14,000 attack that is when you can think about oh should I choose between a crit damage and an attack percent piece right because in this case we have an attack percent a crit damage and an attack percent piece because we still have the ability to be at 14,000 attack that's that's around like the minimum you really want to go by furthermore 
talking about substats, you always obviously want a crit rate substats, right? And in the case of a crit damage piece, you want not only a crit rate substat, but also attack percent substat. That substat is really important, especially in reaching the potential 14,000. And for Comet, one thing that has a, ma a bigger impact compared to other mages, because uh, mages like Vyrn and Zetus, for example, don't even benefit from attack speed, is obviously attack speed. His, he's going to attack more and make the most out of that 20 second duration. If your Comet attacks fast and his ultimate, that obviously increases your damage. So especially for a Comet already getting some attack speed subs, like shown here, has a major impact on his performance. So if you can, start start looking for attack speed and also crit damage subs because we do want to make use of that huge base attack so attack speed subs and crit damage subs are going to be things you really really want to have on your comet to make him shine and now into the artifacts for the artifacts there is there's a couple of choices there's going to be the attack bonus category consisting of ancestral teachings the legendary version eye of the white tower and the mythic version Tier of Starlight. Tier of Starlight easily obviously beats out the uh, the epic and the legendary version. And Tier of Starlight is by far the best mage artifact and pretty much the best mage artifact in the entire game. So if you have a Tier of Starlight, slap it on Karmet and call it a day. Furthermore, we have the Skull of Desecration and... Um, what is the name? Oh, Jesus. That is embarrassing. Skull of Desecration and Ajax Rage. Yeah, why didn't I remember that name? Because you don't really use them. Because of the, the way the game works and how mages need attack, you wouldn't really consider using a Skull of Desecration or an Ajax Rage, which doesn't mean they're bad. Obviously, if you have them already upgraded, uh, plus 10, plus 13, plus 16, you can consider using them, but they're going to perform less compared to a Tier of Starlight, Ancestral Teachings, um, and Eye of the White Tower. And then, then we have the other two, just, just to talk about them. Blue Sea Ice Ring and Book of Distortion. Blue Sea Ice Ring can't decide if it wants to be uh, enabling him to like do more debuffs, so slowing down enemies, or if it wants to have him do damage. It does like half-half and nothing really perfect. Before it was like a full slowing down support type artifact, but now they turned it into this mix of damage and slowing down and it doesn't really do anything. And the Book of Distortion just gives him more attack speed and added rage region. But it has the same reasons as for the mid game that he doesn't really benefit from getting more rage. He really, really wants to make the most out of out of his damage, and that's why you want to stack attack higher. Which concludes late game comment. Now on to end game comment, and as the keen eye may have noticed, we haven't even swapped the right pieces. But why why did we do that? Why are we running a blue set if we're talking about the end game? That's because there's uh, two very specific use cases for mages. Case number one is going to be a drawn, uh, it's going to be a fight. You just put him in, you have him defeat enemies, and it's going to be a relatively, relatively quick fight. And that is where, where the curse set really, really shines, even in the end game, because it can instantly and directly put out a huge damage bonus, being the 30% damage bonus. And then there's the second type of fights that's going to be long drawn out fights there's one premier example and that is going to be gear rate one gear rate one 19 20 21 the best set by far there is going to be using a soul bond arcana and i'm obviously going to later get into where, uh, how to specifically use it but that's that's for the next part so stats let's talk about stats and sets here again we have the same selection it's going to be calamity annihilating might and the warlord set obviously again a tech speed set falling out because it doesn't necessarily add to the damage and we are starting to collect a tech speed from substats instead and stat wise we do want a tech bonus crit rate crit damage if you can get a tech speed and still manage the same stats that's perfectly fine but attack bonus crit rate crit damage is the perfect split for a weapon, which is also the perfect split for a chess piece. And on a chess piece more attainable because of the way that you don't need an ancient piece to get crit damage on a chest. And obviously for the weapon, if you can't get crit damage, you are also relatively fine running an attack speed substat because that also doesn't require an ancient weapon. So getting into the right side, there's there's pretty much 
two cases and in 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 the instant case and in the quicker case you do really want to play your comet if you can manage it again around 14,000 attack being the perfect number in a double attack percent and crit damage though let's let's swap let's swap to a potential gear rate 1 build a build that could actually clear gear rate 121 so so this would be a proper gear world 1 slash drawn out content end game Kamet and as you can see we are still over the fo magic 14,000 and getting into gear rate 1 20, 21 you do want to get higher than 14,000 closer to like 14,500, 15,000 total attack at like the minimum really and what, what we do have here is going to be two attack bonus pieces and one crit damage piece mostly because starting to get into the ancient starting to get into the red sets you have 10% higher main stat so a 66% attack bonus on both pieces compared to the usual 60% on a curse set for example and substat wise you do want attack bonus crit rate crit damage attack speed on every single piece really those those four stats need to be on every single piece and if you can then manage another rage region on top of that so getting closer to like god roll pieces it's obviously only going to be beneficial for his performance but it's not super required and artifact wise the, the perfect like the perfect way really to be able to make use of a crit damage piece is this one this bad boy over here tier of starlight give karma the tier of starlight this is pretty much the only real choice for the end game if you want your mages to outperform everything just slap a tier of starlight on and solve the problem so to finish off this comet video we are going to do gear rate 121 no power of dominance and the most important characters are definitely comet and lazier like if you don't have comet nor lazier obviously you won't be able to replicate it uh morrigan and venoma aren't that important they could be aeon and raiden and then let's get through the bits real quick so comet come on comet so Kamet is uh, rocking obviously the end game Sorbonne Arcana build, double attack percent, one crit damage. You can see the stats. Obviously a tier of Starlight. We have a Mary. Mary is built for speed, Rage Region, and Rage Region for Nightmare Samsara. We have a Lazier. Lazier has speed. Lazier has Rage Region. Lazier has a Nightmare of Samsara. Dolores. Dolores doesn't run except runs Ancestry Teachings. And then we have a Laurel. Laurel is running Invigoration set to boost Comet and the artifact doesn't matter. And that should be all you really need to know to replicate this. So then let's get straight into the stage. So we're going to start out with our Comet. Support that whole shenanigan with a Laurel. So Comet actually gets Invigoration buff. Bring in Dolores. Oh, I actually made a mistake. Whoops. So, <laughs> we bring in Comet. We bring in Laurel. Bring in Dolores. And then as soon as the enemy enemies move in, we are going to obviously start activating our ultimates. So in this case, to go off with Comet. Then when the Zia is ready, we're going to use the Zia's ultimate. Then we can already take Laurel out, put Elowin in, and bring in Mary for the left side. And we're going obviously going to wait until everything is ready. Don't forget to bring in your second healer or Mary is going to die. And that already allows us oh, whoops, to start with Comet's ultimate. And then shortly before the heal actually pulls off, we're going to bring in Lazia. Bring in Laurel. Comet is going to do some work. We're going to wait for the enemies to move in. Already start Comet, start Lazier, wait for them to get a bit closer, and then freeze with Mary. 
And yeah, as you can see, Comet is doing fine work of those. And here again, we can actually use Lazier's ultimate himself. Remove Laurel. Wait for those dudes to close in a bit. Take care of them. Because we don't need extra sources of damage against us. Because if we do keep them on the field, in the end they would they would just kill our units. So yeah, we're again going to use this here. Just pretty much because we can. Could have also saved them there. But we might as well use them. Here we can already go with Dolores. Because we're with the Laurel buff she's going to be ready anyway. We're going to bring in Laurel. We're going to use Comet, bring in Lazir a bit later so he hits as many enemies as possible. And then we should be able to re-trigger... Oh, we forgot. Ah, oh, shit. <sighs> I like All it. right, now we're back at the same part again, but this time without dying. Let's uh, get this one going. So at this point we're actually going to activate Ahmed, we're going to wait a bit with Lazir to let the enemies move in. And around here is the point where you start need to activate your healer's ultimates. Or your people like Dolores and Mary are not actually going to survive those guys moving past. We're going to wait a bit for everyone to cluster up and then start freezing them. And we're just going to bring in a supportive Elowin elf just to make sure everyone stays alive obviously that isn't like super required and any healer can really do it and here we're just going to activate Lazir because he's ready though this is obviously not really required but he's going to be ready anyway for the next oh, I guess he's not ready for the next anti heal so yeah if you want to make your Lazir a bit tankier give him some more HP percent but I don't think we actually need it at this point. So this is obviously going to be a bit closer than we need it. Because this boss is going to heal up the enemies. But we're just, we're just going to keep going with the run. So yeah, just, just because of Lazia dying that one time, this is going to get way closer than we would actually want it to be. But that's just the way it is sometimes. Also, I don't know, does it make the run more realistic? I don't, I don't know, honestly, I don't even know. So yeah, as you can see, it got super close, but if Lazia didn't die at the time, everyone would have obviously died before allowing us <laughs> to have... um. Let's call it let's call it a bit more wall health. Because uh yeah, <laughs> looking at this. We're just going to block this guy over here. Uh is not quite enough, so we're ob oh we're actually going to leak two dudes. Oh no. What an imperfect showcase of a perfect character. So yeah, make sure to actually have your people survive. <laughs> Alright, we are here in Void Rift with Karmat, precisely speaking, the second stage of Void Rift. And with the same with the Satrum trick, we are going to again make use of hitboxes. And for that one, we, uh, we are just going to let all those minions walk on. We are obviously going to cleanse the poison. And... Then we're going to wait for those minions to get closer and start activating Comet's ultimate. And now Comet obviously starts annihilating the top lane. But once he's actually finished with the top lane, with the way that hitboxes work and with the way that enemies actually stack up on your defender, 
if you take a closer look at this minion over here, he's going to walk into Karmet's hitbox, allowing him to hit backwards and pretty much clear out both lanes on his own, really. Which is, I don't know. Obviously, it's nothing like super special, but it gives you it gives you the ability to go down and needed magic damage or in uh, magic dealers you actually need to build and higher higher in other units, right? So it's it's, it's just just a neat trick. 